Question 16. The diagram shows a cylinder. The cylinder has a base of radius r and a height of r over 6. A sphere has radius big R. The volume of the sphere is equal to the volume of the cylinder. Find big R in terms of little r. Give your answer in its simplest form. So we're told the volume of the sphere that we can't see in this question but we're told its radius is equal to the volume of the cylinder which we can see. It's just here. Find big R in terms of little r. Okay, so the volume of the sphere, you need to know this for GCSE level maths, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And instead of doing a little r, I'm going to do a big R because that's what the question tells us the radius is. So 4 thirds pi r cubed is the volume of a sphere. You need to know that for GCSE maths, so you need to memorize that. The volume of the cylinder. Well, the volume of any cylinder is just the base area, i.e. this part, times by the height. And we can actually work out this base area from what we're given in the question. As you can see, the base of a, of a cylinder is a circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared. And we know the height in this question is r over 6. So times by r over 6. r times r squared is just r cubed. So I'm going to put the sixth out in, in the beginning just to make it similar to this. So 1 sixth pi r cubed. That's the volume of this cylinder. Not any cylinder, just this cylinder in the question. So, find big R in terms of little r. What that means is we need big R all on its own on the left-hand side and some equation or some formula on the right-hand side that could involve numbers, symbols such as pi, um, and as many little r's as we want on the right-hand side. As long as big R is all by itself, and that's the only big R in the equation, all by itself on the left-hand side, and essentially whatever else, as long as it doesn't have a big R in it on the right hand side. That's what it means to uh, have big R in terms of little r. And that will become clear in the question. So, as I said, we want big R all by itself, so I will just rearrange this to get big R all by itself. So, straight away we can see we have pi both sides, so if we divide by pi both sides, we know we're not dividing by zero, so that's fine. Divide pi both sides, we just have one which we don't write down, that's the convention in maths, so pi just cancels. I'm now going to times by 3 and divide by 4, so that gives me big R cubed on the left hand side, 3 here, and dividing by 4 is the same as timesing by 4 on the bottom, so 6 times 4 is 24 R cubed, little r cubed. Anything we can see here? Well, yes, if we divide by 3 top and bottom, we have 1 eighth little r cubed. And now we can actually cube root both sides. So we have big R all by itself. Cube root 1 eighth r cubed. And we will get the cube root of 1 eighth. Cube root of r cubed. Cube root of r cubed is just r, so that's nice and handy. Cube root of 1 eighth is just 1 half. And there we have it, big r is in terms of little r, because we have r all by itself on the left hand side, and we have whatever else, as long as it doesn't have a big r in it on the right hand side. And it's in terms of little r because all that it is on the right hand side is just some formula with only little r's in it, which even though it's quite simple, that's all it is in this question. So big R equals one half R. So that's question 16. I hope it's helped. I hope I've not been too rambling in my explanations. Uh, if it has helped, please like, leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. That will really help me out. Uh, if it hasn't, please just leave a comment down below. Um, if you're confused, I'll try and answer your question in the comments best I can, or I might just remake the video. Thanks very much for watching and keep up the hard work.